It was, well, it's hard to explain. This is the history of Toronto's Honest Eds. Extra, extra, Honest Eds, often imitated, never duplicated, world famous bargain house, does it again. Inflation, recession, hard times, not at Honest Eds. These bargains are on till store closing January 19th. Honest Eds was right here at Bathurst and Bloor. It's 23,000 light bulbs made it feel more like a theater marquee than a store. And that was intentional. You will likely know it as this. But this iconic sign had only been there since the early 80s. Prior to that, Honest Eds looked like this. And this. First though, let's back up for a second. Ed and Ann Mervish. Edwin was born in Virginia to Jewish immigrants from Lithuania in 1914. Anne was born in Hamilton in 1919. After moving to Toronto, the Mervishes had numerous failed business ventures before Ed teaming up with Anne and starting a small women's clothing shop around Bathurst and Bloor in 1943. Three years later, they purchased a building on Bloor and named it Anne and Eddie's. In 1948, the couple purchased more properties around the Bloor and Markham corner and named the store Honest Ed's. It was arguably Canada's first discount retail store, but the 34-year-old Ed and Ann had much larger plans. Now in this video, I'm going to focus on the store Honest Ed's. In a later video, I'm going to talk about the life and times of Ed Mervish and the Mervish family in more depth. Now let me briefly digress. If you're interested in Toronto history, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Like it, comment, share it, and tell all your friends. By 1952, they would expand southward, purchasing homes along Markham Street. What you have to realize is that this was actually just a mishmash of old houses and buildings stitched together, stitched in manners which didn't always feel safe and likely weren't. Let's take a quick look at an aerial view of the location in 1947, while it still would have been Ann and Eddie's. As you can see, it was still a house structure with space at the back. By 1950s, some additions added. And by this 1964 view, you can see the incorporation of buildings down Markham. Take note that Honest Ed's went only as far as here until renovations in the early 80s, which took over the Eastern block towards Bathurst. Honest Ed's started out looking like this, which would later turn into this. The gaudy nature of the store would remain consistent though, a main part of both its charm and marketing. That ends just 10.88. Alpha, number eight meat grinder for you at Ed's for only 9.99. Booty style casuals by Chow for ladies and teens, sizes five to 10 only, 12.88 a pair. One location only, four big floors of bargains to save you money. Honest Ed is a nightmare, but my bargains are a dream. As you can see in this photo, the area along Bloor Street eastward towards Bathurst still hadn't become Honest Ed's yet. Take this 1960s photo from Bathurst looking west. Shops unrelated to Honest Ed's. In 1984, the eastward expansion was complete. Take a look at these photos of Mr. T doing a book signing there. Epic. I used to love Mr. T. The name is Mr. T. First name is Mr. Middle name is that period. Last name is T. If you are interested in nice things on your wall, please make sure to check out our oldtorontoseries.com online store. We sell a selection of beautiful prints, old maps, and two really cool Honest Ed's prints. Back up again though, the 1960s brought change. After plans for a parking lot along Markham failed, and transformed the houses they had purchased along Markham into an artist enclave, one in which she created art herself. The bohemian nature of what they called Mervish Village would last for decades. Until the tearing down of the area this past few years, the area still maintained galleries and independent shops and restaurants, something many of us were devastated to see gone. But the story of Honest Ed's is far more than flair, theatrics, discounts, and knickknacks. In many ways, it's the story of the Toronto immigrant experience itself. Honest Ed's was where many newly arrived diasporas shopped, where people could find gloves and toques for 50 cents, 
where you could buy cheap groceries, home supplies, and, well, some pretty odd stuff. Ed understood who his customers were, and to many he seemed like a saint, or at least an ally and showman. Many people will know them by their annual turkey giveaway, which lasted from 1987 until 2015, winning the hearts of thousands of Torontonians along the way. One of the many ways the Mervishes gave back to the community. Now, if you spent any time inside the complicated store, you will know how confusing it was. You'll also remember how many cool old theater posters and autograph signs were strewn around. That was because Ed's role within the theater community, both in Toronto and abroad. Apart from owning the Royal Alexandra Theater, the Mervishes also played a huge role in the Toronto performing arts community at large. Ed passed away in 2007 and in 2013. Their son, David, would spearhead the sale of the business in 2013 for around $100 million. And in 2016, it was shut down. A condo development is now being put in its place. And Toronto, in some ways, is worse. Well, it's worse off for it. The loss of Honest Ed's has been felt by a broad swath of the city. For some, they will miss the bright lights. For others, the affordable goods. It was a place where a person's great-grandmother may have shopped there where you could spend hours looking at strange and weird things, where, to many, they got their feet off the ground when arriving in town. The towers that are being constructed there now will add housing to the area, some art spaces, but to many of us, it's a huge loss. At least, though, I still have my 10-cent denim vest that I bought there in 2005. Inflation, recession, hard times, not at Honest Ed's. These bargains are on till store closing January 19th. One and a half liter Corningware covered saucepan at Ed's unbelievable price of $8.88. Eight ounce jar of Nescafe rich blend instant coffee only at Ed's for just $4.99. Man, I can't believe I didn't wear a hat in this one. I wanted to show that I actually have hair. I do. <laughs>